Hey, welcome to church. We're so excited to have you visit our church. <laughs> you know what? Take a look around. We don't look all the same. We don't dress the same or sound the same, you know. But one thing is true. We all belong to the same father. So, humans of the new, would you stand up and say hello to our new family? <laughs> now that's more like it. You see, we are excited to have you. There's a place for you here, you know. So welcome to the new. Welcome home. Hi, welcome to the new. We are a supernatural army of people who have no taste for mere religion without change. We are the new. We are creative people and the creator of the universe creates through us. Before we proceed, kindly like, share, subscribe and turn on the notification button to get notified anytime we go live. Here at The New, we have one clear vision and mandate to raise a supernatural army. Do you want to be a part of this community but you live outside Nigeria? <laughs> We've got you. Go to bit.ly forward slash the new diaspora to register and we will be in touch. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Welcome again. I am the new, you are the new and we are the new. It's so good to have you join us from wherever it is that you are connected online in diaspora wherever it is in your homes thank you so much for joining this evening you are welcome to another amazing time this evening of instruction of direction of reproof by the word you know so so pleased to have you wherever it is that you have please do um someone a favor please get someone to connect a friend to connect a family member to connect and welcome to an amazing amazing time of god's blessings of god's word and of impartation let's dive in into um the service thank you for joining this evening hallelujah church Praise God, church. If you are in the room, would you shout hallelujah? Come on, can we rise to our feet this evening and acknowledge our God? Let's just lift our hands and say sweet things to the Lord. Father, we thank you. You are so good to me. You're so good to me. You're so kind to me. You're a faithful God. You never for once failed me. So I know that even when it doesn't look like it, you are turning it around for good. Can you lift your hands in the room and honor the Lord? Just as we've been learning, Father, we honor you tonight. We honor you with the fruit of our lips. We acknowledge that you are one true God. Father, we bless you. Lord, I've come to return all praises to you. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, you said it that I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Thank you, Father, for staying true with me. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. And if you're joining us online as well, you could as well just lift your hands in your room, in your car, on your couch, wherever it is that you're watching from. Would you lift your hands? Would you lift your hands, lift your voice? Tell him, Father, I love you. Tell him, Father, I love you. You alone deserve my praise. You alone deserve my worship. You alone deserve all of my praise. My life will worship you. My soul will give you praise. I bless you, God. I bless you, God. 
Father, I worship you. Lord, I worship you. Tonight, I worship you. I give you all my praise. In the name of This is the password to the heart of God. It is Thanksgiving. So we praise you tonight. We reverence you. Oh, Shatala Bakai. Eta Tala Kababara Barakataba. Sheketeke Berekete Kete Kete Kete. Let it come from within. That is how we honor the Lord. Let it come from your heart. Let it come from your heart. From your heart to the ears of the Lord. Can you press it for another 30 seconds? It and a cataya and so ten pampanta kai. They can take it, 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 we have for you, Jesus. 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 Thank you, God. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Sing that again. Praise God from whom all blessings flow.
spend some time praying again. And I want us to read from Deuteronomy 31 verse 6. It says, so be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid and do not panic before them. For the Lord your God will personally go ahead of you. He will neither fail nor abandon you. In times when the world wants you to panic, there are logical reasons to panic. That's the word of the Lord to you. And as we've been learning in tongue and tongues, that you know the power of life and death is where in your tongue. So this night I want you to pray. And what you're going to do is you're just going to go back to God with his word. That this is what you have said concerning me. That you will neither leave nor forsake me. You will neither leave nor forsake me. You will neither leave nor forsake me. And in whatever area of life, where that word resonates with you, begin to declare that the Lord is for you. That the Lord is for you. That the Lord is for you. In the name of Jesus, let's begin to pray together. Lord, I remember what you said concerning me. I will not be afraid. Declare blessed I am who puts my trust in the Lord. I will not fall into sudden panic. Choose to remember how God has brought you out. Don't forget the victories of the past. God has been good to you. So whatever it is, whatever comes, I am reminded that the Oramani Shepaya team is my father and he backs me up. Where my career is concerned, you are backing me up in the name of Jesus. I am not afraid. Oh, declare that you are not afraid. Sudden panic. Man, there are bad rabbits. Put your name. Declare that you are the captain of the Lord. The Lord keeps you. The Lord watches over you. In the name of Jesus, He perfects all that concerns you. Everything that concerns you is kept and perfected. In the name of Jesus, everything concerning you, the Lord keeps. The Lord perfects. Jesus, oh, speak life over that situation. Speak life over that relative on the sick bed. Speak life over that career that is shaken. Speak life. Declare that it is well with you. In the name of Jesus, it is well with you. In the name of Jesus. Oh, don't get tired of pressing in. Oh, don't get tired of pressing in. If there is any area of life where you are seeing the hand of the devil, say Satan, set your hands off that which is yours. In the name of Jesus, the Lord is your shield. The Lord is your shield. Jehovah Sabaoth is your shepherd. Declare that you will not want. Declare that the Lord is your shepherd. You will not want. You will not want direction. You will not want his leading. In the name of Jesus, you will not lack provision. The Lord supplies all of your needs according to his riches in glory. In the name of Jesus, if you have a part of your body where you are feeling pain or you are sick, place your hand upon it. Declare that the life of God is on the inside. Declare that you are not permitted to be sick. Nothing is permitted to die in your hands. Declare that nothing is permitted to die in your hands. In the name of Jesus. Declare, declare, declare the new. Open your mouth and declare nothing is permitted to die in your hands. In the name of Jesus. Arabala kasu subai. In the rabala kasata. Era ra 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 banda sese. In the rakasu katai. Ele basha. Rabande kala basha tai. Ele kedele barada basha. And if it is you, with a doctor's report, oh speak life. Rabababa basha. Mando kabele kedesha. 
begin to declare that in the name of Jesus you are fat you are flourishing declare that you host opportunities declare that nothing dies in your hand declare that the very life of God is on your inside oh lift your voices tonight and declare that you will manifest your prophecies that you will move from prophecies into manifestation in the name of Jesus begin to declare I love declare that it is well with you in the name of Jesus, uh, that the life-giving Spirit of God is on your inside. Declare that everything you lay your hands upon to do, you prosper. In the name of Jesus, declare, declare, declare some more. The new, you are not permitted to be small. I am a boss. Declare that you are not permitted to be small. Declare that the Lord multiplies you, that you are not few. Become a thousand in the name of Jesus. Insist that the word of the Lord has been spoken over you, and that is your final authority. In the name of Jesus, we are the new, and we wage war with prophecies. Declare that the whirlwind of testimony has been blown in your direction. In the name of Jesus. Declare that you host opportunities in the name of Jesus. Declare, declare tonight. Declare in the name of Jesus that it is well with you. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I thought I'd hear it louder. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We're going to be declaring God's word. It's indeed our season and our time of a whirlwind of testimonies. Who has been blessed so far by that? And we have been privileged to have certain words declared over us. And by faith, we're going to be declaring those words this evening. Who is ready? Oh, I can't hear you. Who is ready? Glory to God. Are you ready? Come and see after me saying the name of Jesus. Oh, I want to hear this army roar. I want to hear it like you actually believe it the board of prophecy that has gone ahead of us. Come and say in the name of Jesus, today I decree concerning every area of my life that I reproduce and I am fruitful from today. I multiply and I experience a testimony of explosion. Come and say in the name of Jesus, 
the hand of the Lord is upon my life and I experience accelerated growth in all aspects of my life. Come on, say in the name of Jesus, I am divinely assisted and I'm marvelously helped by God and my life experiences exponential explosion. I want you to say that again. Come and say my life experiences exponential explosion in the name of Jesus. The wind of testimony has blown in my direction in the name of Jesus. I declare that the beauty of God is upon my life and it causes me to be favored and to be attractive. Come and say the works of my hands are established. Come and look at those hands and say the works of these hands are established in the name of Jesus. Come and say I have entered into a season of fatness and I am robust. Come and say my business, my career, my finances, they are robust. Everything that is due to me has come to me now in the name of Jesus. Come and say I'm fat and I am flourishing. I declare the attention of God is upon me. Come and say I declare the spotlight of God is upon my life. I am a city. I am set on a hill. I cannot be hidden. Come and say in the name of Jesus my potentials, my gifts, my business, my career, and my graces, they are visible. Come on, say, I declare, I cannot be hidden by the Spirit of God. I enter into divine opportunities, and I'm set up for divine uplifting. I am reshuffled for elevation and manifestation and expansion. Come on, say, in the name of Jesus, I lay hold of what is mine in every season of my life and indeed this season of my life come on say the name of jesus in this season i enjoy angelic assistance in all my endeavors my angels they are on god at all times i am heavily defended nothing around me is permitted to break down come on i declare oh shall i say i declare i am blessed oh shall i like you believe come on say i'm blessed blessed the blessing of the Lord that make it rich and I don't know sorrow is upon me now the blessing is on me the blessing is in me the blessing is round about me the blessing is activated in and around by going out and in my coming in come on say I declare the blessing causes me to prosper from today the whirlwind of opportunities of open doors of financial increase of healings, of breakthroughs, of testimonies. They are blown in my direction. Come on, shout my testimonies now, 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 now. Come on, rejoice. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on, if you can, let's welcome our pastor as he brings us God's word this evening. Come on, go ahead and make some noise. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Can we celebrate the Lord this evening? You can, you can as well make it louder. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Lift your hands to God and just give him praise. Bless his name. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord, you are holy. Forever you are. We bless you, Lord, you are holy. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. You are holy. You know, you can lift your two hands and make it sweeter to you, to God. We bless you, Lord. You are holy. Time, sing hallelujah. 
Thank you, Lord. Just walking in this evening to the church, I just felt that strong presence of the Lord um, envelop us from the worship to the prayers to the confession. What a, what a mighty wind of his presence. And whenever the Lord is present like that, like he's always present, but we can feel the manifest of it. You, you want to you wanna take those moments. You want to steward that moment right. I thought you about stewarding and stewardship. One of the things you do is that you steward opportunities and then you steward moments as well. This is a moment in, the, in your lifetime. Lift your hands, raise your voices, and give him the praise that he deserves. I will lift up my eyes to the hills, for winds come at my head. I have come from the Lord, the Lord who made heavens and earth. He said, He will not suffer my food, my food to be moved. Yes, Lord. The Lord the King. Thank you, Lord. I'm here in the song of my spirit. Worthy. And you are worthy. Oh, my ragataya. King of kings. Lord of lords. You are worthy. Raise your voices. And worthy. Raise it high. 
way, one more time. You are worthy. You are worthy, Lord. King of kings. Oh, my God. As you're worshiping, you are declaring his supremacy. You are declaring his might. You are declaring his glory. Worthy. Oh. King of kings. Yes, Lord. One more time. Oh, Marabanda, Korabanta, Randa, Kanda, Raba, Sanda, Rekosa, Worthy. You are worthy, Lord. King of kings. Yes, Lord. At authority. Oh. The lifter of my head. You are worthy, Lord. The ruler of Israel. The keeper of Jacob. Mighty man in battle. The Lord of... One more time. One more time. The angels of the Lord are all over this room. Worthy. Oh, the new declare his royalty, declare his supremacy. King of kings. Yes, Lord. You are worthy. Oh, Maradandara. Worthy. I hear the word Maranatha. <laughs> Woo! of kings yes Lord it's okay to do it one more time what the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty worthy 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 oh you are worthy Lord yes over the new yes Lord The wild wind of testimony is now being blown in your day. Allah Makosa Tayara. Say you worthy. You are worthy, Lord. Wow. What if I told you something is rising? Faith is rising. Faith is rising. Yes, Lord. It's okay to do it two more times. And worthy, 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 worthy. You are worthy, Lord Jesus. King of kings. The world. There is an energy I'm emitting from this place. We're going higher. Keep singing, keep singing. Unworthy, worthy, worthy. You're worthy. Makapara. Woo! The angels of the Lord are right here. <laughs> Makasatara, Maka. King of kings. Yes, Lord. Make sure you play all the drums, everything together. You are worthy. King of kings. The Lord is mighty in our midst. I tell you the truth. Worthy, worthy. You are worthy. Hallelujah, Karanata. Oh, Ramata, Rabaka. 
if you're at home, if you're watching at home, get on your feet and worship with us. Hey, 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 you are worthy of the glory of the glory. Over you, I'll open my hands wide as a sign of surrender. One more time, you are worthy. We have two more minutes to sing this. Let the lifting of their hands be like the even sacrifice. Worthy, 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 worthy. Two more times. Yes, Lord. Worthy, you are worthy.
I worship you. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Yes, Lord. Someone say after me, the wild wind of testimony. It's functioning in my direction. It has started for me already. I can see it. I can smell it. I can sense it. I'm living in it already. This kind God, I never see your kind God. This kind. Time. This kind God, of oh. hey. I never see your kind of. Oh. I'm sure you congratulate at least four people and then take your seat. Amen. Sound. Sound. I need more, please, yeah. Please be seated. I want to encourage every one of you not to miss the wild wind of testimonies. I, I truly want to encourage you. I've been truly blown away, positively flabbergasted and bewildered and marooned by the weight of testimonies that I hear every single day. Not a day goes by, not one day goes by without hearing a testimony of what God is doing in our midst. I want to congratulate everyone one of you are ahead. Did anyone receive that prophetically? I want to congratulate you ahead. Let, let me be the first person to congratulate you. It's going to be heavy. 
the Lord says to say to you, I was praying this evening, and the Lord said to say to you, Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 to 3. And there's somebody under the sound of my voice, or certain people under the sound of my voice. This has been the scripture the Lord has been putting in your spirit. And the Lord says to show, show this church this scripture. Let's, let's look at that. And we'll read it. Let's, let's just look at this in Isaiah 1 verse. It says, Arise, shine, for your light has come. I love that. It says, and the glory of God is. Did you see the statement there? It's not has. It's not in the past. It's currently risen upon you. Look at the verse 2. It says, for behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, deep darkness the people, but the Lord will arise over who? And his glory, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord was saying this to me today, that the new we've come into that, to that phase of open manifestation. And you cannot put a candle, or light a candle and put it under a bushel. The Bible says we are a city set on a hill. We cannot be hidden. It says we are the light of the world. As a church family as well, the Lord is saying to us that we've come to that phase um, where God's attention is going to be on us. And when, the, when we talk about God's attention on the church, it's not just the building. I hope you understand what I mean. It's going to happen in the lives of the people. I, I, I tell you, there's something phenomenal going on with the wild wind of testimony. I want to really encourage you. If you have people, friends, members of this church that are not joining yet, look, I can tell you the, tr the truth. Um, you, you, you're doing yourself a disfavor by not joining those, that meeting. Um, they are I mean, the testimonies I keep hearing every day, I'm literally just blown by, by the faithfulness of God. And the things he's doing in our midst is mighty. Mighty indeed. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And as I prophesied over someone last week under the sound of my voice while the wild wind of testimony was going, and I said, you were here and you said that, oh, your wild wind of testimony hasn't happened yet, and you were feeling somehow about it, and I prophesied, and someone sent me sent a message and said that, that same day, you know, she got a massive testimony. The Lord lead me, le is leading me again to say that. There's somebody on the side of my voice right here. Believe this word. That day I said 24 hours. People were sharing testimonies about 24 hours, miracles, promotions in 24 hours. Things were going on supernaturally. Praise the Lord. I want to say it again. I don't know who's going to catch this one. But I decree in the name of Jesus, before this holiday is over, receive a turnaround testimony people have people have people have gotten jobs when it was not appraisal time look something is going on right here again i prophesy over you receive that open door in the name of jesus somebody shout i receive it now praise the lord amen you may be seated now, I have such a powerful teaching this evening. Powerful teaching. <laughs> and I just don't know how I'm going to be able to complete it because we've spent about another 20 minutes to worship God and there's no, there's no time in the presence of the Lord that is wasted. Amen. Amen. And um, if you've been following the the teaching on tongue and tongues. Let me see your hands. If you've not the one they are teaching in your church alone, Ikeja people, because I know Ikeja people are very, um, they are loved by God. Amen. Amen. Um, if you joined the one in Lekki or you watched it afterwards, let me see your hands up. Some people are not sure. Okay, P put your hands down. Now, I want to truly encourage you. Those of you who watched the one in Lekki, you noticed that what I taught here was different from what I taught there. All right? It's, it's not the same thing. It's a whole series. In fact, it's as though every time I'm, teach, I'm reading and studying and I'm praying about this tongue and tongues teaching, the more I keep seeing new things about this subject. 
So I truly want to encourage you to go back and listen to the messages again. If you've not listened to any of the messages, maybe Tongue and Tongues 1 and Tongues and Tongues 2, and now we are doing Tongues and Tongues 3 today, and tomorrow at Lekki Church, I'm going to be doing Tongues and Tongues 4. Now, they are all different, and I want to encourage you to go back and listen to it all over again, please. It's going to help your vocabulary. It's going to help you to navigate your way in destiny. But most importantly, it's going to school you and educate you on how to talk your way to the top. Glory to God. Like I've been saying in every of the series of the um, Tongues and Tongues, I've been saying the fact that this is not really a, a, a Bible teaching class as a way, even though that's what we're doing. It's actually a cultural architecting in your spirit. Are you following what I'm saying? It's a training that is going on here. A training on how we speak as a church. A training on how you speak as a believer. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why the psalmist says it this way. He says, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart, it says, be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord. The words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The Bible says it's not the things that enters into the heart of a man that destroys him, but the thing that comes out of his mouth. And words are very powerful. Jesus says, the words which I speak unto you, they are spirits and they are life. And so when we do these teachings on um, tongues and tongues, it is very important that you pay close attention to it. For example, today, I'm going to be teaching on another subject, on still under the subject of tongues and tongues. But there are many parts to this. What I tried to do last week Tuesday and last week Wednesday was to pretty much establish um, the importance of how you speak as a, as a believer. That's what I did. But look, I said when I was teaching that, that tongues and tongue is not just limited to how you speak alone. There are many sides to this powerful teaching. We use words to do everything on the earth. Everything. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3 that we know that the world was framed wow, by the word of God. Hebrews 1.3 the Bible says, upholding all things through what? The word of his power. Genesis chapter 1 all the way down to the end. We saw it last week. And God said, and God said, and God said, and God said, and God said. Words are powerful. You use words to initiate people. You use words to convince people. You use words to deceive people. You use words to instruct people. And you use words for creation. Words is the medium of which we operate everything that we do on the earth. It's very powerful. If I want to get you to do something right now, the only way I'm going, to, I'm going to be able to communicate that to you is through use of words. And we also know that word is not only limited to vocabulary. We also know that, okay, if I do like this, am I talking? Am I talking? But I'm not using my mouth to talk. But this is a language to you. Yes or yes? Talk to me. It's a word. It's a way of speaking. It's non-verbal communication. So we have verbal communication and non-verbal communication. Glory to God. If I do like this, what am I doing? Am I talking to you? Yes. If I'm doing like this, what am I doing? Jumping. I'm jumping. It's words. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And so in the occult, if they want to do anything, it's words. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In the realms of the spirit, I said to you that words are swords. They fight your battles without you being there. Words are swords. They are spiritual swords. If I want to get you to begin to think in, in a different way, I have to use words to get you to think that way. If I want to culture your orientation, change your mindset, shift your perspectives, the way I have to do that is through the use of words. So words are very spiritual tools. That's what the Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 18. It said, death and life and the power of the thongs and blessed are those who know how to use it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I create my life with the words of my mouth. Talk to me again. I create my life with the words of my mouth. Hallelujah. Let me try that again. Hallelujah. Let me try one more time. Hallelujah. So today, I'm going to be teaching on the part three of tongue and tongues. This is such a powerful teaching. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to finish it today. And I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to continue in Lekki because I want to teach something else in Lekki um, on the island tomorrow. But on the, the part three of tongue and tongues, 
I will be teaching on what I've titled Tongues and Tongues 3, The Engineering of Deception Through Tongue or Through Words. The Engineering of Deception Through Words or Tongue. This is such a critical teaching. The Lord promised me while I was praying that he's going to show people visions. And while the teaching is going on, they are going to, by their own words, cross-correct things that they see. Listen to me, everybody, prophetically. Please listen to this. I've taught you this many times on how to respond to the impulse of the Spirit. What does that mean? When a word comes in your direction and you know that word is speaking to your spirit or is talking about your situation or is talking about your condition, whatever it tells you to do in that moment, do it. Are you getting what I'm saying there? For example, when I'm speaking, that is going to happen a lot today because the, angel, the Lord told me that, that the Lord of angels dispersed, not just right here and those also watching online, that's going to be showing people things. And while you see those things, for example, the teaching might be going on and all of a sudden you, you, will remember, you remembered something that happened three, five years ago, sometimes even ten years ago, something you've not really remembered. You know that by your own thinking, you didn't bring that thing to your thoughts. The moment that thing happens to you, use your words immediately to cause correct that thing. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, Is somebody following me? Yes, sir. That's such a simple prophetic instruction and I hope that you follow through with it. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's start out by reading the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 6. Spirit of the living God this moment, thank you. Have your way, O oh God, do what only you can do. Let your word come with so much simplicity yet powerful. Transform our lives, change our minds. Cross correct every satanic influence. Reroute people who have gone the wrong path through deception, knowingly or not knowingly. Change the hearts of men. Build again esteem. Break down stronghold. Resolve unresolved background and childhood issues. Let your word go into the past of men and bring about a supernatural rearrangement that will bring order and elevation into their lives by your spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus, every ongoing voices of accusations and tongues that rise up against them in judgment, spirit of the living God right here and right now, I ask that you condemn it right now. Let the voices in their head, in their mind, in their conscious, in their subconscious, let it be hindered right now, right here in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, let this message come with so much simplicity and yet so powerful. In the authority of Jesus we pray. Amen, amen and mighty amen. amen. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 6. The Bible says, do not let your words cause your flesh to sin. It says, nor say before the messenger of God. In other words, don't say before the angel of God that it was an error. In other words, the angels of the Lord are like soldiers. Nigerian soldiers. Apologies if you're a Nigerian soldier here. We used to crack and say that it's good. They know they don't know come, as it were. It says, don't say before them that this is error. It says, why should God be angry at your excuse and destroy the works of your hand? Let's look at it in the Amplified Version. Let's read that together in the Amplified Version. And we're going to look at it also in the NLT Version. I want to show you something very powerful there. Everybody, let's look at this together. One, two, ready, go. Do not allow your speech to cause you to sin. And do not say before the messenger, priest of God, that it was a mistake. Why should God be angry because of your voice, words, and destroy the works of your hands? In other words, your word is destroying the works of your hands. Is somebody following what I'm saying here? Yes, sir. The Bible says in the book of Psalms 90, it says, let, the word, let, let the beauty of the Lord God be upon us and establish the works of our hands. Yes, establish the works of our hands. In other words, you are praying that prayer that God established the works of your hand by the beauty of the Lord God, but the words that you are saying is what destroying that thing in your hands. Let's look at it in the NLT version. The NLT version. Let's read together, everybody. One, two, ready, and read. Don't let your mouth make you sin. Don't defend yourself by telling temple messengers that the promise you made was a mistake. That will make God angry. Did you see that there? Now, I don't want to get, you know, distracted by, you know, when people say, why would God be angry? Of course, you understand, you understand the context in this scripture here. Now, 
It is very important for us because one of the things I want to try and attempt to do today is to help you understand the warfare of words. That when we talk about the theology of words or tongue, we are not only talking about it from the perspective of faith through which we receive things from God. Because many times the moment you see words or the power of your tongue or the power of words, the conditioning and the mentality of an average believer or Christian is that learn how to talk right. When they say something is wrong with you, don't say, say there's nothing wrong with you. So it's only limited to the faculty of talking well. But while that is correct, what I taught you last week, both in Ikeja on the island church, it is not totally limited to that. This subject of words and tongues is a broader spectrum just beyond the faith life of receiving by speaking rightly. While that is correct, it is not limited to that. And so today, by the help of the Spirit, I want to attempt to help you see other perspective where this concept of words is concerned, particularly by focusing on what I have titled the engineering of deception through words or tongues. Tomorrow, in the, on the island church, and you don't want to miss that one, I will be teaching on what I've titled murmuring, the power and the danger of murmuring in your divine allocation. The power and the danger of murmuring. And you know that the faculty in which you are going to do deception and the faculty in which you are going to use also in murmuring is your words. Are you following what I'm saying? Glory to God. Come on and say it louder, amen. amen. If you are redeemed of the Lord, say so. Say amen. amen. All right, as a church, we do call and response very well. So when you hear something, you respond back. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes, Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. amen and amen. amen. All right, let's start out by reading something very powerful in the book of James, chapter 1. No, let's start, chapter 3, pardon me, and verse 1. James chapter 3 and verse 1. We have a lot of reading to do today, so I'll get one guy and one girl, one lady, who reads very well. I think Pastor, Ma, um, Pastor Ellie knows how to read fast, so please pick one mic in this area who... Who knows how to read well, fast, um, that you will not disgrace her, you know, the people at home. Okay, Pastor B is like, it's falling on your, on your hands, okay. So I'll, we'll read this one. We're going to get to a place where we're going to read a lot of scriptures, so. Amen. Let's go together. Everybody, we're going to read this one together. One, two, ready, read. My brethren. Hold on, we're going to, is this, look, what I'm doing is I'm culturing, culturing us on how we respond to the word of God in this church. Amen. So when I say let's read together, when you read it, you see it. And once you have seen it before, you will not be tossed by any wind of doctrine because you have seen it before. Are you getting what I'm saying there? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. So that they don't teach something that they corner you in the teaching. And then you are held, held bound because you didn't see it yourself. You only heard it, but you didn't see it. So look at the scriptures, read it yourself. At least some of us didn't read the Bible today at all. So this is an opportunity to tick your conscience box that you read the Bible. Amen. Are we ready? Let's do that. One, two, ready, go. Let many of you be teachers. Let's look at the TPT. Let's read the TPT version. The, the TPT quite explains it very well for us. Let's read the TPT version of James chapter 3. The TPT of James chapter 3. I'm teaching on what I've titled the engineering of deceptions through tongue or words. All right, let's read. One, two, ready, go. My dear brothers and sisters, do not be apt to become a teacher in church. Health standard of judgment. Next verse. But especially with our words. To control ourselves in every way. And that means of our character is mature and... Next verse. Wow. Next verse. And driven by first wind, yet they are stirred by a tiny rudder. 
So the tongue is a small part of the body, yet it carries a power, great power. Set a huge forest ablaze. Next verse. And the tongue, hold on there. Did you see that? I'm sure you've read this scripture before, but I want to point something there to you. It said the tongue is a fire. In other words, if I want to burn this room down, even though I don't want to burn it down, all I need to do is to use my tongues. Think about this. When you want to cook food, the moment you light the matches, you have engaged the cooker. For the cooker, look, the cooker has the power to work by itself until you light the matches and put it close to the gas cooker. It's not going to come on. You cannot cook. Even though the cooker is there, that's why even when the cooker is there, you can't cook it because there is no matches on there. The moment you light it and you put it very close to it, boom, you see fire there. That is the power. The fire there is what engages that makes you cook your food. Amen. It's the same way the Bible says the tongue is that fire. It can cook your life or burn it down. He said the tongue is a fire. Wow! <laughs> and listen, there's no part of the scripture that is written from human interpretation. Look, if God says the tongue is a fire, you better believe that the tongue is a fire. You are not saying in your mind that, well, it's not a fire like that. They are just using idiom, uh, idiomatic expression. No. The tongue is a fire. You know, this teaching I want to do today, I don't think I can finish it here. It's, it will change your life. I want to, let, listen, I want to show you, I want to take you to the highest height of spiritual warfare. This teaching today. But this is just, let us set the background right. So, it says the tongue is fire. Look at this. It can be compared to the sum total of wickedness. And it's the what? The most dangerous part of our, of our body. You would have thought that the most dangerous part of your body should be your kidney. It should be your brain. In other words, even when your kidney is going bad, if you have your tongue, you can talk it right. Is somebody hear what I'm saying? The tongue is the most dangerous part. Look at what the Bible says. It's the sum total of wickedness. It now says it corrupts the entire body. Oh my God. Your tongue. Tap five people around you and tell them, watch out. Watch how you use that tongue. Tell them, watch how you, how you spew fire. And it's an hellish flame. It says it releases a fire that can burn throughout the course of human existence. Let me explain what that scripture is saying to you there. It's talking about the fact, listen, listen. If Jacob looks at his son and blesses him, and forever that blesses upon him, and looks at another and curses him, and forever from one generation to another generation to another generation, the curse is upon him. What brought that curse there? His tongue. What brought that blessing there? It's tongues. In other words, you can place something on someone that remains in someone's family life forever. I heard a story that was very powerful. A woman said that one time in a family, they get to a particular age. This is very powerful. They get to a particular age and before they clock 40, two years before they are 40, they will die. Everybody in that family would die two years before they are 40. They went for a meeting one time. A man of God looked at her, called her forward and said, I see something about you. He says, go to your family house. When you get to your family house, stay in the doorpost of the family house and be declaring the word of the Lord. Give her some psalms to be declaring. Be declaring the word of the Lord over that family house. She said she was doing that. One day, this is a real life story. She said one day she went to the bathroom and was, was in the restroom there. The moment she stood up from the restroom, she said she saw like... Um, there's a name she called that thing, but I don't know their demonic terms, so I don't need to put it in my vocabulary. And she saw the thing all around like this. She brought it out, of course, she had risen some audacity by faith, and burnt it. She was 39 when that thing happened. At the time she was giving this testimony, she was almost 60-something years old. So, how did that generational cost land? How did they stay? 
by somebody somewhere just laying words. Somebody somewhere covenanting to say, because I'm the father of this family, or the grandfather of this family, going forward, I sacrifice my whole generation so that I can be wealthy. And because of that, everybody in that generation, listen, these things are very powerful things. Though. Look at what the Bible says. It says, throughout the course of human existence, but thanks be unto God, who always causes us to triumph. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The devil took Jesus to the mountain top. He said, look at everything here. I own it. Just bow before me. Tongues. Warfare was going on right there. Get ye behind me, Satan. Warfare. It can change the course of human existence. Words. He says, the tongue is a fire. How, you, how are you using your own fire? That's a question you should ask yourself. Let's go over. Next, next verse. Verse 6. Quickly. Verse 6. We, we, we need to run actually one two ready go the, verse, seven. verse seven pardon me verse seven one two ready go For including birds creeping reptiles have been tamed by humans next verse verse eight but the tongue is not able you know why you know why it's not able to be tamed now let me explain that to you because your tongue operates with your will. You know, I showed you that last week. Remember that? And that's the, what I told you. About the faculty of your will is not only to decision making alone. You remember when I said that? That is also to the words that you say. So the reason why it cannot be tamed is because it's at your own will. Are you getting what I'm saying there? It's at your own will. So if I want to say now, Jarastafari, it's my way to say it. You can't stop me from saying Jah Rastafari. Amen. Are you aware? Listen to this. That the most powerful thing, do you know what it means every day to wake up every look? God has blessed man. Oh, that you wake up every day and you have the willpower to make your own decisions and go away with it. In other words, I wake up and I say that I want to bless somebody with a car my own decision and nothing nobody no one can stop me from making that decision that's power so what god gave man when he blessed man was absolute power i'm telling you when god gives you a will he's giving you absolute power the person that wakes up this morning and says i want to kill somebody before the end of the day carries his gun and shoots somebody and somebody dies he was his own will absolute power that's the same way the tongue is. They both operate in the faculty of the, of the, of the will. Your decision making and your words. Everything that enters into your thoughts comes out of your mouth. That's how it works. That's why the Bible says it cannot be tamed. The only person that can tame the tongue is the owner of the tongue. That's the only person that can tame it. And guess what? The tongue does not operate in neutral. I told you that last week ago. There's no, there's no neutral with the tongue. Is it that you are saying something or you are not saying something and somebody else is saying something on your behalf? Is somebody following me here? The Bible says it is fickle, unrestrained evil that spills out words full of toxic poison. That's what I want to show you today. The engineering of deception. I tell you by the Spirit of God today, there will be liberty. Amen. Go to the next verse quickly. We are just still doing. All right, let's go there. Verse 9. One, two, ready, go. It says, We use our tongues to praise God, our Father, and then turn around and curse a person who was made. Look at me. Are you aware that every prayer you have prayed in your life that has brought the result in your life, in your manifestation in your life, it was your tongue that you used to pray to that God? Your tongue is the link. <laughs> That, that engineers what is going on there and brings it as a converter in your life. The tongue is powerful. This is the tongue we used to praise God. Let's go quickly. Verse 10. Now out of the same mouth, we pour out words of praises. One minute, curse the next. My brother and sister, this should never be. Next verse.
fresh and bitter water can flow out of the same spring. Next verse. And understand the ways of a God. Advertise it with a beautiful, fruitful life guided by wisdom, gentleness. Let's stop there. Today, I did an introduction for you to tell you about how powerful your tongues are. Now watch this now. Look at me, everybody, because I'm getting to the deep of my message now. Look at the person seated beside you. And just imagine this, that as powerful as your own tongues are, so is your neighbor's tongue also powerful. Let that thought sink in for one minute. Before I move ahead, let that thought sink in. Think about it. Don't toast each other now. I'm already seeing couples already toasting each other. They're doing plain love in front here. Have you thought about that? In other words, you have fire, I have fire. So it's what's called fire for fire. And when it comes to spiritual warfare, it is fire meets fire. The one who rules is the one that has the fire that can overpower someone else's fire. This message, I should actually teach it in a leadership class. But the Lord asked me to teach it to the whole church. I want to teach you a life powerful principle of spiritual warfare. Please listen very closely to what I'm about to say to you. As I'm teaching, some of you will see things and you will be ready for your journey. Turn with me quickly to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4. The Bible says 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4. The NKJV. It says, For the weapon of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ, of God, bringing every thought into captivity, the obedience to the obedience of Christ. Next verse. And being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Let me tell you one story. A lady shared a very powerful story and she was going to get married. So, you know, as the custom is, some of our parents will say you should bring five people. By the way, don't let them do that thing to you. Say you should bring five people. So she brought five people. She knew the person that God told her she should marry. This is why, let me say this here. I said something at Lekki Church yesterday on Sunday. Please go, up, go back and listen to that message. I taught on honor. So, so, such a powerful word. Go back and listen to it. I said, many, listen to this, many adulthood problems are usually unresolved childhood problems. Many adulthood problems are traceable to many childhood unresolved problems. The woman grew up from a place of lack. Now, her daughter is about to get married. She has five choices. One is a good guy loving the Lord, doing fairly okay. One has money. Not necessarily with a good character, but the, 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 the guy is favorably disposed to the mother because the guy would always send money to the mother. Now, in the short time the woman has left to live on the earth, like someone said, she's already in the departure lounge of life. She's already calculated to the fact that I'm not, I've suffered till I'm this age. At this junction, I have to get somebody who would marry my wife. So, in the truth of things, the daughter, pardon me, has been, has been set up for sale, unknown to her. Set up for sale. 
without her involvement. Now, she believes her mother's word so much. And, and I'm going to say very deep things. So. Now, let me just put a caveat there because the Lord said I should say it. This message is not to make you paranoid. Because you can see this kind of message. You come to church next morning, everybody's looking at each other. Everybody's paranoid. That's not what this message is for. This message is to help you go into the depths of your journey so that you can identify deception by sight. If I, if I do a survey now in this room, I can tell you 65 to 70% people in this room with what you are doing currently now is not your choice. <laughs> Don't worry. We are going to go there now. You know, the word of God will dissect us, but it will heal us. Yeah. Motivation can exp- exp- inspire you, but not necessarily heal you. But the word of God would heal you. So open your heart to these teachings today. Praise the Lord. So the lady, the mother said, you're going to come and meet my prophet. Oh. This was the prophet that named you. The prophet that grew, you know, took you up when you were growing up. So this is your prophet. This is our family prophet. At the back, the mother had gone to tell the prophet, hey, prophet, oh, you see that one that is black? That's the one me I want to. Oh. So whatever prophecy you are giving, ensure that it is in favor. Real life story. This is not, I'm telling you. Ensure that it's in favor for the, the person I want to marry, that I want my daughter to marry because this daughter and the union of this daughter and this person would favor my journey. I will not suffer pain again for the rest of my life. At least I will eat. And in the subconscious also, it is also a favorable thing for the daughter because at least you have somebody, you, aren't, you, aren't you tired of suffering too? If you cannot make the decision, make the decision on your behalf. So the guy came, all of them came out one after the other. She knew her convictions but because of a warfare that was going on on her behalf without her knowing, The prophet said, that's the person, or oh, this other one. You know, I don't know all of them used to die before their time. That's usually, they've, they say this one, they will die before their time. This one will not, it will not end well. What does it doesn't end well mean? It will not end well. <laughs> Let's just face our front and be talking the message. The lady, of course, believed the prophetic, the prophet, and got married. Unknown to her, she was married to her mom's choice not a decision. So she got married. When this testimony was recounted, now she's now she was a Christian. She's now when this testimony was recounted, she was already the fourth wife and practicing Muslim before she left eventually. Guess what happened? Real life story. In less than 2 years the mother died. And she was in that marriage for almost 14 years. Now, this is not to share a story and say, ha, he, ha, he, he. I'm telling you that career professional, you might be sitting in the office and fire for fire is opposite you, but you don't know. You know, this teaching is master class. So I'm going to go about it systematically. The engineering of deception. Tongues. The power of tongues. I told you this thing is beyond just, uh, I believe I receive it. Because in the charismatic and in the world of faith movement, every time we talk about tongues, it's always in the context to receiving something from God and using your confession right and be speaking confession right, whereby tactics are also going on behind. But you cannot identify that one. So you receive everything from God but the people that we collected back from you have already started strategizing on how to take it back from you. But you don't know. You know why? Because the people in church, we are conditioned to know how to take, but know, don't know how to be wise on the earth. 
This is a very powerful teaching. The Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 24 verse 4. Matthew 24 verse 4. This is Jesus speaking here. It says, And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one, no one, no one deceives you. Deception is a bad decision presented at good with a long-term effect. It's a bad decision presented as good with a long-term effect. Let me show you something in the scriptures. Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 16. Proverbs 6, 16. Proverbs 6, 16. The Bible says, these six things the Lord hates. Yes, seven are an abomination to him. Let's look at the six things here. Number one, a proud look. A lying tongue. Hand that shed innocent blood. Let me ask you a question before we even go to, to everything else. If you were the devil and you know the six things that God hates, what will you use? The six things. Let's go to the next verse. A heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift in running to evil. Next verse. A false witness who speaks, do you see that again? Speaks lies, and one who sows discord amongst brethren. One who sows discord amongst brethren. So if you are in church and you are sowing discord, Throwing traps of offenses, brewing thoughts, conversations, gossip, malice, those things, throwing those things going on there. The Bible says these are some of the six things Jesus ate, God ate. He said the seven is an abomination to him, he can't stand it. So if I want to look at somebody's journey and carefully rearrange the organization, such that they are out of God's plans and will for their lives, I'm going to either use one of these six tactics to get them out of divine alignment. That's what I'm going to do. Think about it. If you're the devil, you're not the devil. But what will you do? It's out of these six. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs 29 and verse 6, verse 5, Proverbs 29 verse 5, Hey, Oh, God is, God is up to something in this meeting today. Are you ready? Yes, sir. The Bible says, a man who flatters his neighbor spreads a net for his feet. <laughs> Ask your neighbor, how many nets are you? You know, look, as a career professional, you can be at work close with your boss. It could even be your line manager. And there is a spiritual warfare there going on, but you don't know. You can be celebrated in front of that boss. You are, you are working so well. Working so well. Ah, if not for you, we will not be here in this team. On your birthday, they send you gifts. On your this, they do. In your mind, say, my boss, forget about it. He likes me. Ah, my boss, she likes me, eh? The heart of man is desperately wicked, scripture says. Who knows it is not? When the time of appraisal arrives, should we promote him or her? No, let's just give another one year. She's still training. He's still training. How, how do you identify deception? It's in the scriptures. I want to show you. I don't want to jump ahead of myself. There are two types of deception. There is first called self-deception. And many of you, you are currently practicing it. 
Are you ready for this message? I should be going home. You, you might be practicing self-deception. In other words, let me teach you something. Listen to me, everybody. Let me just go ahead of myself a little bit. Listen to this very critically. If you're online, please listen to this and save your life. There is what we call the method and the mission. A lot of times, people equate the mission and the method to be the same thing. The challenge there sometimes is that the reason why people get expired and they do not know the things that makes for the peace, like Jesus said, and when the time of their visitation occurs, is because they are too married to the method, they forget the mission. But see, what is timeless is the mission. What would ever be temporary is the method. For example, transportation. Transportation is timeless. Timeless. We would need transportation till Jesus comes back. But the method of which, in which we used to transport ourselves has moved from camel to donkey to okada to... Are you getting what I'm saying? To, now it is going to move to maybe a point where we now just do like this. I even would like that one. I don't, pa, pa. And I'm in Dubai. Now, if you hold on to the fact that the way I've known transportation is donkey, then you see airplanes and say, I have to, I have to also be given a word like that woman that went to, that was going from Nigeria to London. So I want to get a word. You now start going with, you are now driving from donkey because the method you have married is against your own mission. Do you know that that's self-deception? When your past reality is as real to you than the current reality that should help you fulfill your mission, that also is self-deception. That's why I said, when unresolved issues in your childhood is as the strongest voice in your spirit or in your life, you are holding on to a method that has expired. Self-deception. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs 29 verse 5, it says, a man who flutters his neighbor, it says, spreads a net for his feet. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 26 and verse 28, let's look at Proverbs 26 and verse 28. It says, a lion tongues hate those who are crushed by it. A lion tongues. Let me teach you something. Lie can also be truth mixed with lies. Don't let me go there for now. We'll get there. Open again to Psalm 78 and verse 36. 78 and verse 36. You are going for a presentation that your boss was going to be there. And you know that this is a chance to take that presentation. A colleague at work just silently just says that, why do you always stammer every time it's presentation time? The moment that happened, the warfare happened to you, you don't know. Something just caught on your side. As, is my boss is going to be dead, don't let me abrazz myself. I will wait to fight another time. And you never got another chance. That's finished. Because a lion tongues, they enjoy those that they are crushed by. Sometimes, listen to the height of this deception thing. Sometimes, even the vessel in which is saying it to you don't know what they are saying. They are being influenced by something else to communicate to you. How would the devil stand behind Satan, behind um, Peter, and be speaking on behalf of Peter to Jesus? Was he not that close to Jesus? What, what, what is the devil doing close to where Peter and Jesus is? He said, you're not going to go to the cross. He said, Nibo, get thee behind me, Satan. He could recognize the one that was talking to me now and the one that just spoke to me now. They are two different voices. Deception. And the way deception is used, the spiritual warfare there is words. That presentation was opportunity opened up for you for your promotion and your revelation. In fact, your boss was going to take you into his own master class. But somebody just said it on the passing to you. He stayed there. Now, this is usually what happens. The devil would always sometimes look for your shortcomings in your past 
and collaborate it with something that somebody is saying now. Once it looks like something that is true, you accept it as the truth. Did somebody hear what I'm saying there? So you have done presentations before and you were Kylo Loin. You know what I mean? You didn't quite get it right. And the moment that person says that, the thing you say there is, it is true. Look, if the fact was you were good at asking presentations before, if that person says you're always stammering, you're not going to take it lightly. You won't even read it as anything. In your mind, say me. Every time they want to do presentations, it's me they used to call now. So you're not going to count it as anything. The reason why you will count it is because it's true. Go and read Adam and Eve. That was the tactics that we used for them for, to eat the fruit. Look at the tree. Amongst everything, did God really say you should not eat of it? He knows, John, that the day you eat of it, you will surely die. And was, was, that, not the, was that not the case? Don't eat of You can eat of every single thing here, but don't touch of this one. The day you touch of it, you shall surely die. But that's what he was saying to him, to her. Let me say this here. There are people who are married that overcompensate. Why? Because when they were growing up, the father or the mother gave a wrong ideology that you are not really good for anything. So by the time they get married, they always want to try and compensate that person, because I know I'm not really good, so the fact that I even married Joseph, this must be the help of God. Warfare is happening to people they don't know. Let me teach you guys something very powerful. Look at me, everybody. I want to teach you a powerful principle. Go back home today or tomorrow and ask yourself, who am I? Who am I? Who am I? Help me! Somebody help me. God help me. Who am I? Listen. Let's go on. Let's go on. Psalm 78 and verse 36. The engineering of deception. Remember what we said again. If you were the devil, what tactics will you use? I know I can't stop you to entering the cross. But can I use Peter to stop you? It says, nevertheless, they flatter him with their mouth and they lie to him with their tongues. Let me teach you a powerful principle. When people tell you what you know you don't have capacity for, don't take it too lightly. It's just like somebody, they've been deceiving me now. I now wake up one day and I'll say that because of the anointing that's upon my life, I'm going to the moon. Because people tell me that every time I jump, I jump higher than life. Think about it. Then Mr. Anansi, I'm going to the moon. You know, I'm, I've mooned out of life. <laughs> what is going on in the conversation? I told you about that story of that lady many years ago. I said many years ago, last year. A lady who said that God told her that he wants to show himself to her. He wants to reveal himself to her. But this is, how, this is the only condition upon which he can do it. He says, leave Lagos and start praying in tongues and be heading to Ibadan. I want to show you deep and terrible mighty things thou knowest not. You know, that's how you hear those kind of voices. The way it first started, she went to her house and locked herself up. A her pastor came to knock the door. He said, no, the Lord told me that I should stay indoor and I should fast for 60 days, not eating anything. 
The pastor wanted to break the windows to enter and rescue. I said, sir, if you, take, if you break this thing, you are tampering what God is saying with to me. You are tampering what God is saying to me. They left her. The next voice, after she finished 60 days, she was, um, she was salivating for life. The voice told her, now you are almost there. You are almost there. You are doing well. You are almost there. Now, take a walk with me in the spirit. From Lagos, when you get to Ibadan, I will show you that I am Rafa. I'm going to play such an anointing upon your life. Listen, anything that makes you feel that there is a specialty with your calling is a trap. Let me explain what that means about specialty. That is, there is something that God wants to do with me that he has really not done with anybody. So therefore, my own ordination and my own consecrations must be deeper in a way. It is trap. Deception. You know, I was talking about, I'm going to get there in a moment. I was talking about self-deception. I'm going to get there in a moment. She started going, oh, and she was praying, oh, and guess what? The Holy Ghost was giving her all trance. When deception happens, the first thing that happens is that the door of your heart to discern and to be correct shuts down. So you'll be praying, but what you are praying, you can't convert the hearing of it. It will not enter because that door is locked. Before she got to Ibadan, she ran mad. She's still mad to you today. You know what that means? That one is taken out by the devil. It's like finish him, sniper. Pew, finish him. Oh yeah, next. Deception. I'm going to show you something in a moment. What is deception there? Let's define it. What is deception? I want to school you. Some of you, before you get married, hear this message now. So you don't marry a disguised angel of light. You know that's what the Bible calls the devil. He can disguise as an angel of light. Where the pretty milk and the shawarma you are eating has taken your faculty of decision making. Because you were disguised into destiny. Like you, you were in deception. You were up. You were in a movie of deception. Well, you were casted, Abby. Uh -huh. They casted you in a movie. And they didn't pay you for the role. You were not even aware you were playing a, you were playing a production. There's somebody on my sound of my voice. If you're that person or you're watching online. Many years ago, your boss told me you will never rise. Told you you will never rise like me. Please, if you are that person, if that statement has come to your spirit, you have heard that statement. It clicked something on your inside when I said it. Please stand up now. Don't be shy. You. Please, can you come forward? You know we are not joking here. Look, let me tell you people in this church, oh, forget all this one, so. Forget all this one, so. This one is just, uh, it's for you people. He uh, did there, oh. Come. I don't mean to embarrass you, but, you know, this service is for you. Because you will so rise. Araman, karabaka, sakabaran, talabakaya. The Bible says the snare is broken and you have escaped. The snare is broken. There is no enchantment against the house of Israel. Neither is any divination against the house of Jacob. And by the word of the Lord today, I break you free from that limitation. The limitation in your mind, the limitation by the word that came out, and the operations of the spirit he operates with. I break you free from it completely now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as I lift you, rise higher. 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 No boundaries whatsoever in your heights. Now listen to this prophetically from today. The Lord has given you a new faith. You will run. You will not be worried. 
You will rise, you will not be hindered. Oh, Ramasa, please pray. I want to prophesy. Please pray the kids for me. Prada da batai. Eremeto suseve liga baroto liba kada ba arede. Erede bedono boroko sose se barada da bada bada. The Lord is crowning you with honor. Crowning you with honor. Crowning you with honor. In that field, you will be a light in that place. In the name of Jesus. And what this, the Lord is going to use you to teach him humility. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Woo! Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. The Lord just gave you a new garment. Congratulations. When people know things in their heart, you know, they can look at your journey. You have not even started to manifest yet. You've not even started manifesting yet. So people think that when you start manifesting, they can plant things. Look, they knew that Jesus was going to be born. By the reason of favor in your life, not as though you are even expressing some height of it, but by the reason of people just looking at you and saying, there's something about this person. They are not even using charm or going to have ballast or anything, but they can set words of limitation by deception and tweak that thing in your mind. But you didn't know that you were conditioned already to fail. You are wondering why three years after you have not been promoted. You are wondering how come the business has not lifted. Because somewhere in your mind, the conditioning there is don't rise, don't you know, that thing too, that thing, don't bite more than you can chew. You've heard that thing. It's limiting some of you. Somebody say, I break free now. I break free now. Say it again. I break free now. I break now. Wow. What is deception? Deception can be defined as the manipulation of thoughts such that they convey a false reality. The manipulation of thoughts so that they convey a false reality or a false belief system. Now this is just for fun. Don't take this too lightly, just for fun. Some of us, you know how if your mom wants to get you to do something, just call her on the phone and you will hear, you say, hello, mommy. Hello. <laughs> you are angry. Oh. It, it. Hello. Mommy, how are you? I'm fine. You know what's going to happen to your heart immediately? Your heart opens up. It just opens up. Now, that's, there's nothing wrong with that. Oh. Your mom can use that with you. That's, I mean, she gave it to you, so there's nothing wrong with that. Just in case, every time. So that's why I say you can't be paranoid. In this, it's not that every time somebody says, hello, you say, hey, hey, they want to deceive me. <laughs> that's not what I'm saying, no. But you see that the moment some, something like that happens, oh, your mom is crying. Hey, did, when your dad passed, you promised me that uh, you'll be there for me. And say, mom, I've not called you in three days. You are crying. So what's going on there? is a tweak. No, no. I didn't say that. It's just a tweak. Listen to me, everybody. Look at me, please. From today, that you are awake, from today, let your decisions 100% be you and God. Did you hear what I said? Let your decisions, listen to me. Your parents will not outlive to see the remainder of those decisions. You are going to spend more time on the earth than them. He that has ears. You know, that's why I said this teaching is a master class teaching. But you people are master class people. So we can teach master class teachings in master class places. Amen? Class. 
Write this down. The power of deception is that the victim is unaware of the deception that is currently taking place. The victim is unaware. They don't even know that deception is currently ongoing with them. Look, you can have five friends that all of you are close and four out of the five, they are in unity about something concerning you. But you are eating in eating restaurants with them. And you, are, you don't know that you are in a script. Because you have equated everybody's laughter to acceptance. You have equated every org to acceptance. You have equated every... Are you getting what I'm saying? You've equated every act of kindness to acceptance. But you don't know that the highest warfare is going on there. You've heard stories now. They say, uh, some, some say, he married my, he was, we're dating, then he married my best friend. You don't know what was going on there. The guy was in limbo. They were operating warfare. He didn't know. Clueless. Ah, Jesus said that be as wise as a serpent. Christians. Do you know that Christians pay more price for being delusional? Because sometimes everything to us comes with a sense of innocence. Doves. Just pure doves. And I told you before, the serpent there is not the cunning craftiness of the serpent. It was tamped with the wisdom of the serpent. Not the craftiness of the serpent. Don't take it to the extreme. The, the inroad of deception is that there is something in you that constantly seeks for truth and correction. Ay, somebody missed what I just said there. The inroad of deception hmm, many times is that there's something inside of you that constantly seeks for truth and correction and sometimes validation. The moment that tree is operating, it's an it's a open inroad for deception. And listen, if you are playing that card, they can spot it. It's an inroad. One time I was speaking to somebody who went into extremes. And I asked him a question. I said, how did you get to this place? He said, P.S. Let, Pastor, let me tell you the truth. He said, I got there out of genuineness for the truth. And for people, he said, this was, this was his words. He said, I got there out of shared innocence for the truth. I was just, I just loved the truth so much and I wanted people to know the truth. But I didn't know where my quest for the truth got me into error. So I didn't know. It's usually that inroad. That's why, listen to this very carefully, everybody. Have you wondered, I was answering a question of somebody the other day and I said to the person, I said, have you wondered why in our generation we have plenty of knowledge but little of results? Have you wondered before? Have you sat down to think about it? You know why? I will tell you why. Because the level of resource and resources available to us, particularly the bank of knowledge we can find everywhere, has given you too many. So what happens there is that knowledge is now colliding with knowledge in your mind. So you hear something about something here, you hear something else and about something else there, then it collides with one that you've heard before, then you've another that one here. So what happens is that you have plenty of knowledge that has come into your spirit, into your mind, and now you are left with a decision, but you are not making any decision. The power of a knowledge is that decisions should come out of it. But guess what? Look, if I give you eight decisions or things to make, I say, make decisions and you want to do it, and there, there are eight options. If I give you eight options, 
it is proven statistically that people who have more than three options are likely not to make any decision. Because what's going to happen when you have eight? You are confused, you drop the decision. So people are full of knowledge but no results. Why? Because things are conflicted in their hearts. Yeah, in different things, it's just conflicted in their hearts. So by the time they want to make that decision, in their mind, something else is hitting it to say, ah, but they've taught us that if truly God will speak to me, then I must have done some five, five hours or five years of fasting. So God cannot give me this kind of idea just like that while I was in the restroom. It cannot be God. God doesn't visit that place. You are laughing, but it's the truth. So things are conflicting with each other's mind. So what will you do? You will not do anything. Bank of knowledge, but nothing to show for it. Deception. This is the, one of the most quiet messages. People are just looking at their soul. Somebody say, I receive light. I receive light. Write this down. True deception is much deeper. It comes when you get swapped away by a wrong idea. You get swept away by a wrong idea, but you have become convinced that is the truth. You get swept away by a wrong idea, but you are now convinced that is the truth. So, let's look at some stories. Let's look at some things in the Bible. Joshua chapter 1 verse, Joshua chapter 9 verse 1. Pastor Eli, let's go. Joshua 9 verse 1. Look at me everybody, before Pastor Eli begins to speak, read the Bible. Look at me everybody, let me get your attention. I was praying, the Lord told me this. He said, one of the things that the devil does, please listen to me very carefully. Give me that pashmina that I asked for. Give me that pashmina. Pastor Maiwa, please come. Let me use you. Thank you very much. Just stand there. Hmm? Look at this. All right. Pastor Maiwa, go all the way down and come back. Just go all the way down like this and come back. So you see, Pastor Maiwa is going on. You know where he can go? He can see road. He can see clearly. So go. Okay. This is... Watch this. Blind your eyes yourself. Thank you. This is the effect of deception. What deception does, what deception goes for first, is your sight. That see the attack of deception, because you can never become if you don't see. You can never move faster if you don't see. It blinds your sight first. You can't see clearly, Abby. Abby, are you sure? You can't not see through. See let me well. let me do it well. Okay. Uh, you want to tighten your pastor's? Uh, has he offended you? No, uh, uh. Has he offended you? Pastor Mayer, what have you done to this young man? So you saw how many minutes it took him to? All right. All right. Pastor Mayer, oh yeah, make your way. If you break my own pulpit. Watch what's going on here. His speed has reduced. He's now at the mercy of the deceiver. That's where I told him to go. But this is where I brought him through. He's now at my mercy. His journey is no longer his. His journey is now mine. 
His journey is no longer his, but he's alive. He's excited. He's, he's doing God's plans. But he's no longer aware. His consciousness has now been depleted completely because he's no longer himself. I took him away from his path. If that was where he was supposed to meet his wife, I've taken him away from the place. If that was where his breakthrough was supposed to come, I've taken him completely. He is now operating another man's existence, calling it his own. It's a false reality, completely false reality. Because somebody had the, the tongue of fire to change and distort perception. Deception is the distortion of human perception. I can get your perception off, I can distort your path. People can be fighting this thing for 50 something years of their life. That's what they are fighting. 70 years of their life, a distortion occurred. Somebody else is at their mercy. Sometimes that person has even died. But the subconscious is so powerful. They are hinged on the subconscious. They are operating by the subconscious and the thought of words. You remember that scripture that we read? Thought of words of another person. Sometimes isn't even in the fourth generation. They told you don't partner with anybody because your father partnered with somebody, lost all his business. You, you don't have idea. You, you know strategy. You understand finance. You have finance. Somebody with idea comes to you. Let us partner together. I say, never. I will never partner. Why? Because your father's experiences became your own experience. Your eyes was blinded. Your person that should take your business to another level, that both of you partner together to take that thing to another level. You are there praying to God. Your answer is before you, but you are not going to do it. Why? Because somebody planted something. Deception happened to you. Deception completely happened to you. So you are blinded. I can keep him here. He's under my control. Look, I don't have anything chained to him. So when we say we, the, the word of God breaks the chain, breaks the yoke, it's not that they bind you. Words can bind you. So I've left him there. I can leave him there till I'm done with my service. He will stay there. He's compelled. Look, power is compliance of obedience. And power is not only when we talk about spiritual power. Anyone that has the war of words over you is powerful over you. Anyone that, are you getting what I'm saying? So in other words, I've compelled him into obedience the way he is. My words, my words has compelled him to obedience. My God. My words. So sometimes the people we are celebrating, we are celebrating other people's thoughts towards them. People's outcome. When you look at what is written in the volume of the book concerning them, it was not what was written. From the beginning it was not so. This was not what was written. But somebody else put them there. Do you know that it can even be flourishing in another man's thoughts, but it's not what was written concerning him. Something inside of him will be fighting and dying for expression, but he will be enjoying the presence of what he's enjoying now because at least it is the reality of the now. The only option for this man is that the word of God comes to him like he's coming to you now to release his sight. You see, first clear first. That's what happens. When you are in bondage, you don't make decisions quickly. You first settle down and say, okay, where do I go from here? All right, so Pastor Maya, come back, please. Come back. Thank you, sir. Come. Pastor Maya, oh yeah, go the normal route you go. What's the difference? Sight. Sight. Let me just blind you with deception. I've trapped your destiny there. Thank you very much. So, listen to me, everybody. You are going to have to fight. Oh. This tongue and tongues matter. The devil can lay, it can lay traps of deceptions around your life. Some of them very innocently. banana. Now your type, they become millionaire. They told you something like that too. Now your type is still that. Now your type is still operating. Let me tell you something. Pain can be an experience in your journey of maturity with God but pain is not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ 
Don't be too used to pain so that every time you experience pain in your life, you believe that God is using it to teach you something. Don't be too used to smallness, managing, hand to mouth, pillar to post. Because you were conditioned. But whenever God wants to start raising men, you must go through wilderness for 10 years. Be careful of some of those wilderness teachings. Though. Someone that was already bound is now bound by the word of God. By the ex- supposed word of God coming out from the mouth of someone. You are already bound times two. I don't just have time. This is time. This is time up already. I'm going to get to a part in this teaching. Maybe next week or two weeks time. I'm going to break down doctrines for us. Do you know, let me tell you this. As powerful as I am, as a spiritual man, as I am, this year's, don't listen to everything. Do you know that you today, to you today, if I see, as I'm driving, and I see a car accident, a brutal car accident, I don't look towards it. To today. Once I see it, I just take my eyes. The first thing I'll do is I'll pray for the people there. I always do that, they never miss it. Even when a car breaks down, of course, I look at that one, and I pray for them. But a car accident... I don't look at it. Everything you see is a seed. Pastor, let's read the scripture and close with this. Can, can, I, can I just beg us for five more minutes? Can we get five more minutes, please? All right, thank you. PL, let's go. And it came to pass when all the kings. Please hold on. I want you to look at this scripture very well. I'll continue this in Lekki tomorrow. So that maybe next week we'll now do the murmurings. I don't know yet. Depending on what the Lord says. Now, watch this. I want you to look at this scripture very well because there's something very powerful that happened in this scripture. I want you to look at it, watch it, look at it very closely. Okay, Peter, let's go. One, two, three, go. And it came to pass when all the kings who were on this side of the Jordan, in the hills and in the lowlands, and in all the coasts of the great sea toward Lebanon, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hevites, and the Jebusites heard about it, that they gathered together to fight with Joshua and Israel with one accord. But when the inhabitants of Gibeon heard what Joshua had done to Jericho and I, they worked craftily and went and pretended to be ambassadors. And they took old sacks on their donkeys, old wineskins, torn and mended, old and patched sandals on their feet, and old garments on themselves. And all the bread of their provision was dry and moldy. And they went to Joshua to the camp at Gilgal and sent to him and to the men of Israel, We have come from a far country. Now therefore make a covenant with us. Then the men of Israel said to the Hivites, Perhaps you dwell among us, so how can we make a covenant with you? But they said to Joshua, We are your servants. Hmm. And Joshua said to them, Who are you, and where do you come from? Hmm. So they said to him, From a very far country your servants have come, because of the name of the Lord your God. For we have heard of of his fame, and all that he did in Egypt, and all that he did to the two kings of the Amorites, who Hmm. were beyond the Jordan, to Siho king of Hishbon, and all king of Bashan, who was at Hashtoreth. Therefore, our elders and all the inhabitants of our country spoke to us, saying, Take provisions with you for this journey and go to meet them and say to them, We are your servants. Now, therefore, make a covenant with us. See that? This bread of ours, this bread of ours, we took hot for our provision from our houses on the day we departed to come to you. (laughs) But now, look, it is dry and moldy. And Mm. these wineskins which we filled were new, and see, they are torn. And these our garments and our sandals have become old because of the very long journey. Hmm. Then the men of Israel took some of their provisions, but they did not ask counsel of the Lord. Do you see that? Hold on. They did not ask counsel of the Lord. Another version puts it away. They did not inquire of the Lord. In the book of Deuteronomy 7, 7 let's go, I think verse 12. God had already warned the children of Israel not to have treaty with any other nation. Let's look at it. Deuteronomy 7, Deuteronomy 7, verse 2, verse 2. Look at this, verse 2, read it for us. Let's look at the NLT version, NLT version. All right, read it together, let's read it. One, two, ready? When the Lord God's hand, when the Lord, when the Lord your God hand nations over to you, and you conquer them. You must completely destroy them. Make no treaties with them and show them. Did you see that? This is what God told them. 
They came to make treaties with the children of Israel. The Bible says they did not inquire of the Lord. Let's read all the way down. Please continue that scripture. Let's go back 15. there. 15. So Joshua made peace with them and made a covenant with them to let them leave. And the rulers of the congregation swore to them. And it happened at the end of three days, after they had made a covenant with them, that they heard that they were their neighbors who dwelt near them. Then the children of Israel journeyed and came to their cities on the third day. Now their cities were Gibeon, Shepharah, Beroth, and Kijat, Jerem. But the children of Israel did not attack them, because the rulers of the congregation had sworn to them by the Lord God of Israel. And all the congregation complained against the rulers. You see, they could not do anything again, because they had made a covenant, they had sworn. Even after they found out, I'm going somewhere with this so. <laughs> Let's keep going. 19. Then all the rulers said to all the congregation, We have sworn to them by the Lord God of Israel. Now therefore we must not touch them. This we will do to them. We will let them live. Lest wrath be upon us because of the oath which we swore to them. And the rulers said to them, Let them live, but let them be woodcutters and water carriers for all the congregation, as the rulers had promised them. Hmm. Then Joshua called for them, and he spoke to them, saying, why have you deceived us, saying we are very far from you, when you dwell near to us? Now therefore you are cursed, and none of you shall be free from being, sl being slaves, woodcutters and water carriers for the house of my God. So they answered Joshua and said, Because your servants were clearly told that the Lord your God commanded his servants Moses to give you all the land, and to destroy all the inhabitants of the land from before you, therefore we were very much afraid for our lives because of you, and have done this thing. And now here we are in your hands. Do with us as it seems good and right to do to us. So he did to them and delivered them out of the hands of the children of Israel, so that they did not kill them. And that day Joshua made them woodcutters and water carriers for the congregation and for the altar of the Lord in the place which he would choose even to this day. Even to this day. In other words, when deception partners with your destiny, when deception forms alliance with your destiny, there was consequences in 2 Samuel. Let's look at 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel, uh, we'll just close with this. 2 Samuel chapter 21, verse 1 to 9. 2 Samuel 21, verse 1 to 9. Look, let's look at that quickly. All right, let's go. Now there, now there was a famine in the days of... We're reading now the consequences of that treaty that they made by deception. The partnership that occurred by deception. This is the consequences of it. Let's look at it quickly. Now there was a famine in the days of David for three years, year after year, and David inquired of the Lord, and the Lord answered, It is because of Saul and his bloodthirsty house, because he killed the Gibeonites. So the king called the Gibeonites and, said, and spoke to them, Now the Gibeonites were not of the children of Israel, but of the remnants of the Amorites. The children of Israel had sworn protection to them, but Saul had sought to kill them in his zeal for the children of Israel and Judah. Therefore David said to the Gibeonites, What shall I do for you, and with what shall I make atonement, that you may bless the inheritance of the Lord? And the Gibeonites said to him, We will have no silver or gold from Saul or from his house, nor shall you kill any man in Israel for us. So he said, Whatever you say, I will do for you. Then they answered the king, As for the man who consumed us and plotted against us, that we shall be destroyed from remaining in any of the territories of Israel. Let seven men of his descendants be delivered to us, and we will hang them before the Lord in Gibeah of Saul whom the Lord chose. And the king said, I will give them. But the king spared Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, because of the Lord's oath that was between them, between David and Jonathan, the son of Saul. So the king took Armoni and Mephibosheth, the two sons of Rispa, the daughter of Haya, whom she bore to Saul, and the five sons of Michael, the daughter of Saul, whom she brought up for Adriel, the son of Brazili, the Meholite. Verse 9, let's end at verse okay, 9. And he delivered them into the hands of the Gibeonites, and they hanged them on the hill before the Lord. So they fell, all seven together, and were put to death in the days of harvest, in the first days, in the beginning of barley harvest. Let's close with this. Guys, look at me, everyone. You saw how the Gibeonites were now laying claim that is our right. Just give up, we want to kill at will. Because you have partnered with us in deception. They now laying claim of the territories, now our territory now. How many things are laying claim with you? How many things? Who got you to where you are that is laying claim? 
What deception orientated your mind to where you are that is laying claim? Who are the Gibeon nights of deception that you have in your life currently? What deception? And let me tell you something. Deceivers always make demand. They will make demand. They will demand your greatness, demand your calling, demand your place, demand your graces. They will make demands. Because of time, we're going to close. We're going to pray this powerful prayer. Let's rise up, everybody. Isaiah 54 and verse 17. We're going to pray for just two minutes. Isaiah 54 and verse 17. How many of you would like us to do it? A, a program where we just teach on this subject. Tell your resident pastor. They did not allow me to do it last year. I was uh... Let's read the scripture together, everybody. One, two, ready, go. Hold on. Every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, it says, Thou shalt condemn them. The tongue that rises up against you in judgment is not only people that are backbiting around you, because see, we are conditioned also with the scriptures. When we have read it over and over again, we are already conditioned. Every tongue that is telling you what you are not. They are condemned. Tongues of deceptions. It says, every tongue that rises up against me in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servant of the Lord, and their righteousness is from him, says the Lord. Give me the NLT version. We're going to pray with that. Every Gibeonite that is already partnered with you, in your subconscious, in your self-deception, you are going to nullify it today. Tomorrow, please don't miss this message. I'm going to teach you how to, tomorrow is the how to, how to identify deceptions, how to take it away from your life, and how to rearrange the genesis of your life from the foundations by the word. If you have any growing up thing, to, please listen to this message. Um, this message will free you completely. Look at what the Bible says in the book of uh, the, um, Isaiah 54 verse 17. It says, but in that coming day, no weapon turned against you will succeed. Succeed. He says, you will silence every voice raised up to accuse you. He says, this will be the benefits. These benefits are enjoyed by the servants. How many of you are servants of God here? So you see that these are your benefits. Hallelujah. You are going to lift up your voice in one to God in one minute. And say, if there is any wrong words planted, any deception currently ongoing, I condemn it now. Any programming wrong currently ongoing, I condemn it now. Every tongue of accusation currently ongoing, knowing or unknowing, I condemn it now. Pray in the spirit, please. Pray in the spirit. Hold on. Thank you, Lord. Listen, there are some people that understand my voice. God just told me that there are certain relationships in your life that shows up in some moments. They will not be there before. All of a sudden, they will show up. Then they will disappear. Then all of a sudden, they will show up. And it's a programming. It's a programming. In the name of Ari Makoli Abatoni, Apara Kasonte Katunia, Jelira Kaparua Talamanda. Quarter to enter into things are located for you, they show up in the authority of Jesus. I rebuke that voice of accusation. Pray in the spirit, everybody. Pray in the spirit. That can deceive another person that knows that my heart is open to us. In other words, they cannot come directly to you because you know your heart is blocked. But they can talk to your mom, your father, your sister, your in-laws, your cousins. And you know your heart is open to receive any words that come from them. From today, every tongue whatsoever of accusation, they are blocked completely right now. Somebody pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. 
Between the age bracket of 19 to 21, please listen to the word of the Lord. Don't let them pamper you into redundancy. You know, there's a way you can be cultured into pampering. Everything they do for you. And you get to a particular age, a particular season of your life, you cannot even do anything whatsoever. Because deception, they call you Oba Day, Oba, Oba. While it's okay for you to be taken care of, it should not enter into the negativity. Is somebody get what I'm saying here? You are going to cry out to God one more time. Every tongue of accusation, every tongue that rise up, pray in the spirit. If you are online, please pray. Every ongoing oppression, every ongoing oppression, every ongoing oppression, Those people telling your bosses, lying against you. Those people telling your partners, things you did not do. Those wrong suggestions. Those unnecessary cares that pampers you and stealing things away from you. Pray in the spirit. The Bible says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. From today, I know the way. From today, I have truth. My eyes is no longer blinded. Every voice says in my heart, words I've heard, messages I've listened to, that is turning and tweaking the signs of God in my spirit. I blot it out. Every programming that is programming to shallowness, that is programming me to smallness, that is programming me to nothingness, I take it away. I'm the city set on a hill. I cannot be hidden. My discernment is heightened. My discernment is heightened. I'm conscious. I'm conscious. I'm conscious. I'm conscious, I'm conscious. Those your friends, you want to get married. But you are among friends that don't want to get married. And every time they keep saying, oh men, men are this, men are that. Unknown to you, is programming in your mind. Now you are saying you don't want to marry. Now you are saying you don't want to have peace. Because of a program of three, four friends. Pray, 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 pray. Oh my God. I want to give you one more minute. From today, this year's only year, whatever is true. This year is permitted to only year whatever is true. There is a system inside of me that flushes away wrong thoughts, flushes away deceptive ideas, flushes away cancels of Ahitophel. Every cancel of Ahitophel. Every cancel of Ahitophel to your Absalom. Flushed away.
we don't have time we have to close now lift your two hands I want to pray one prayer from today you are in charge of your subconscious it sounds very simple but you don't know what I just said I'm speaking under the influence of the spirit everything they've dumped in the bank of your subconscious the people you ought to like you no longer like because of your subconscious the relationship you ought to keep because of your subconscious. The doors you ought to enter that you are not entered because of your subconscious. The limitation that occurred in your spirit because of your subconscious. I attack every childhood trauma. From today, you, you begin to operate in the mind of Christ that you have. Your, now, you have power to raise your subconscious. You have power, Amara Every planting of the enemy, I uproot it right now. 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 I stretch my hands towards you. Maraka Santo Robacali and Obonto Lavadacata. Aramato Roboco Santo Robacala Pantorobo. I go deep within through the prophetic to your childhood. Araka Socota Parata Lava. Every fault. Every dance, every abnormality, I repair now by the power of the Spirit. I repair now by the power of the Spirit. I repair now by the power of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, any deception currently ongoing, every deception currently ongoing, or any programming of deception currently ongoing your family in your workplace in your career amongst your friends anywhere from today they are nullified completely now lift your two hands receive sightedness receive sightedness receive aramata receive sightedness those online receive sightedness hey, 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 hey. you are free 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 from that stronghold. You are free. Completely free. Oh, Maraka Kappa. That 20 years of blindness. 30 years of blindness. 40 years of blindness. 60 years. You are completely free. The circle cease to continue with you. In the name of Jesus. From today, the moment you see deception, you will smell it. Your deciding, your discernment heightened. Even positive cancel that are not good for your own destiny. Coming from any quarter, whosoever. Positive cancel that are not necessary for your own destiny. From today, your 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 sensitivity will pick it up. So I program in your spirit, but listen to these things I'm saying to you. I program in your spirit an alarm. An alarm. An alarm in the spirit. That when it comes, it picks it. Just like a cold, the socks entering into cold water. Once it comes near to you, or once it's said to you, that alarm will ring. Something happened to some people here. Blow the trumpet at the sound of rejoicing. An alarm in the spirit. Blow it, blow it, blow it, blow it. Blow it one more time, blow it. Rejoice! 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 Sit down, let's close, let's take the offering. I'll take the offering because of time. The account details are right on the screen. Please, you want to give, please give. On Sunday, we're going to be asking you to partner with us. We're planting the new Abuja. The new Birmingham. And we're going to need your support, your, you know, in some of those places. So we're going to talk about that on Sunday. But today, I wanted to give to this. 
How many of you would do well to ensure that you join tomorrow's meeting? Because like you see, I didn't really enter a lot of things. Please, make sure you watch that message tomorrow to really help you. Praise the Lord. Have we given? Thank you, Jesus. Father, we bring our seats to you. In you, we have light. In you, we see light. And by the power of the Spirit of God, right here and right now, as we give to you, we place it right here in the hands of you, Jesus. And we thank you because it's lifted up to heaven. And it multiplies for the propagation of the kingdom of our Lord Jesus and for the manifestation of the sons of God on the earth. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Don't forget, the wild wind of testimony continues tomorrow, same time, 7 p.m., 7 a.m., pardon me. And you can also share your testimonies to new experiences at wearethenew.org. And service continues on Sunday across all the new churches. We are teaching on the powerful subject of honor. If you want to go listen to the message I preached on honor at the Island Church on Sunday, it will truly bless you. And see you across all the new churches as well. And God bless you. All right, the Abuja Retreats, thank you, is happening next week, Saturday. Amen. We're going to be meeting with workers, partners, friends, people who want to be a part of this. And um, I want to encourage you, if you know somebody, I think you have the flyer. Tomorrow we're going to share the flyer. Please put the flyers on your status, on your Instagram, your Twitter, your YouTube, whatever channels you have that you can use to propagate and the, and the link so that we can have a lot of people join and register as well. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let's take the creed as we close. Rise on your feet, everyone. Amen. Say after me, I'm sensitive. I'm, sensitive. I'm, discerning. I'm discerning. And I know. Thank you, Lord. Let's raise our creed. One, two, ready, go. I am the new, and I have no taste for mere religion without change. I live a result-oriented, purpose-driven life based on the principles in God's word. I'm a man of the word. I'm yielded to the spirit and committed to God's purpose for my life. I take my place to God's supernatural army and his agenda for the earth and my generation. I bring great joy to my city and as sure as God helps me, I will not give up. I will not cave in, I will not quit, I will not fail, I will not fear, I will not die until my job is done. God bless you.